So what happens when there's changes to short run aggregate supply? Well, first of all, we need to find out the reasons that short run aggregate supply, or SRAS, uh, there's no easy way to say it, unfortunately. Um, we're going to see why we see changes to it first. So first of all, as we already said, we can have changes in input prices. The most common of those is a change in wage. So let's see what happens if wages become more expensive. Well, what we're saying if wages become more expensive is that suppliers, producers, it costs them more money to pay their workers. And we already said that the biggest cost that suppliers face is wage. So if that wage goes up, what we're going to see is that at each price level, they're going to be able to supply less and less and less. So an increase in wage will lead to what we see here, shifting uh, at arrow A, shifting from Y1 to Y2 at price level 1. It'll be just the opposite, so if wages are lower for some reason, well, if we can lower wages, then we're going to be more willing to supply goods and services at each price level. Therefore, we'd see a shift to the right shown by arrow B. The same is going to be true if other input prices change. Probably the most common of those, as I stated in the last video, is going to be oil prices. So if we see the price of gasoline go up or down dramatically, well, that's going to affect transportation, and pretty much all businesses rely on transportation some way or another. Obviously, if it's something specific, if we're a nation that is highly industrial, um, I guess I'm thinking of Japan right now, and they import steel, um, well, if the price of steel changes, that's really going to affect how they do things. So, as always, we need to keep a little bit of context of which country we're talking about and what sort of inputs might be important to them. But if those inputs become more expensive, aggregate supply is going to shift to the left. If they become less expensive, if they decrease, or if the prices decrease, then we're going to see a shift to the right. Now keep in mind this distinction we made between short run and long run. Short run was when the input prices are constant. So as soon as they're not constant, if they change, it doesn't make it the long run, it makes it a new short run. We'll talk more about that distinction later on. Okay, secondly, we can have government policies. Um, most commonly, if we see taxes on businesses change. Um, this could also inc include things like regulations. Uh, the one summer that I worked construction, I got to see uh, firsthand how work would just have to stop when we were waiting for a uh, building inspector to come out. We couldn't do any further work, but we were still getting paid. So because of those regulations, it was more expensive for my employer. So when business taxes, so taxes on profits, uh, maybe having to buy a license or something like that, or just, just the, the kind of uh, red tape that a business has to go through, when those things become greater, again, that's going to be a higher cost. So we're going to see short run aggregate supply shift to the left. And when they become lower, we're going to see a shift to the right. Subsidies, though, as always, are the exact opposite of taxes. So. If there's more and more subsidy, subsidies, or if the government offers higher subsidies to certain businesses, well again, what that's going to mean is their cost of doing business decreases because for each unit they produce, they get a subsidy from the government. Therefore, at each price level, they're more able, shift to the right, to supply goods and services. I was trying to be fair here, so I just kind of came up with this idea on my own. But oftentimes, you know, regulations, the more regulations we make, the more loopholes we create. So if there are loopholes and we can get around the regulations, well then, opening up those loopholes would make it easier for me to do business, that is, it would cost less. Okay, um, the third type we have, so input prices, government policies, and then this one is just sort of on its own, um, and these are supply shocks. For something to qualify as a supply shock, it has to be pretty sudden and it has to be dramatic. That is, it has to affect um, a large part of the country. So, um, typically these are going to be negative. There's some cases where we could say that it's a positive supply shock, but most of the time when we talk about it, it does, uh, is a negative and therefore it tends to have a negative connotation. 
Typically, we're talking about weather. So if there's a long-term drought, or conversely, if there's floods, uh, too much rain, and the crop is destroyed, um, if that happens, that would be considered a supply shock. This is the one that can be positive. It could just be you get a run where the weather is good and it just continues to be good and good and good. Um, my hometown, where I'm from, um, it's a ski resort. In the last four years, they've had really bad snow. So they're less able to supply the service of skiing. Um, they can't keep the resort open as long as they used to be able to. So that's it, they can't supply anymore. Um, in the years previous to that, they had had, when I lived there, it seemed like just about every year was a good snow year. So that, when it's a good snow year, would shift the macro economy of that town, Math Lakes, it would shift its macro economy to the right. But right now, when the weather's bad and they don't get much snow, that would shift it to the left, and we would call that a supply shock. With all these, you'll notice that the key point is, is that the potential actually does change. So if a place that sells access to snow, a ski resort, if there's no snow, they can't potentially run the lifts. I mean, they can, but of course, nobody would, you know, want to pay for that lift ticket. All right, so weather, um, obviously natural disasters aren't always the same as weather. Some natural disasters are weather related, but earthquakes and uh, things like that. So obviously the, a good example here is uh, the Japanese earthquake and tsunami. Um, that destroyed a large uh, amount of Japan's potential. Not only the, the land that was ruined, but also remember in that um, the tsunami, it knocked out several of the power stations. So many more businesses are going to be affected by that because there's not as much power in the country and no doubt the power became more expensive and all those sorts of things. Finally, we can see political uh, supply shocks. Typically it's going to be a war of some sort. So it could be an internal conflict like a civil war or being invaded by a foreign country. Um, it could be maybe a little bit more minor, like a coup d'etat, or maybe there's no real bloodshed or, or fighting, but it just kind of destabilizes the country. Bottom line in all of these is we have to remember that the potential, that is the land, labor, capital, or entrepreneurship available to the nation is going to be lessened. Or in the one case of good weather, it's going to be increased.